the fact about maternity tourism is that it's very common. Uh, for example, last year at St George's Hospital, it was reported that there were 1,800 um, uh, foreign ladies who had um, delivered babies there. And in retrospect, 870 of those, approximately, were ineligible for free NHS care. So that's, that's an extent... Uh, what would you do in those cases? Because those people you're probably not going to be able to recoup a large amount from them. You can chase them, but you're not going to get very much. What, what is the practical thing? You ask them to show their passport when they come in and they're yeah. pregnant? The, the point about p passports and, uh, is just to do with um, non-urgent care f for elective um, right. cases. There's very little you can do for maternity cases right. because the government has determined that to, anything to do with maternity is immediately necessary, and therefore they have to be treated. They are charged, as you say, but we know that only 16% of invoices that are issued are honoured. Right. Well, Helen, yeah. um, why is it so difficult <laughs> to just charge people for at least the non-elective, the, the, the non-emergency, the elective care? I mean, what's wrong with that? We just don't have the infrastructure to do it because our NHS, our wonderful NHS, is free at the point of need. We don't have a charging system set up. There's no universal way of finding out if a patient should or shouldn't pay. So when you walk into a hospital, for a start, you and I don't carry any ID or documentation right. because we expect free treatment. When you go and see your GP, you don't carry anything because there's no reason to. If we wanted to charge everybody who theoretically would need to pay something, we'd have to set up a huge infrastructure right so across the piece. So you'd have to ask me, am I eligible, Every in single order patient. to get the people Absolutely. who are not eligible? Is that really so difficult? Is that really so difficult for hundreds of millions of pounds? Well, 1.3 million patients see their GP every single day. Let's get this in perspective. Just in England, we've got 7,500 GP surgeries. That's a whole heap of infrastructure, people, systems, training, not let alone the card. What would you, would you issue uh, ID cards? Would you use passports? What well, would you use? That would be an idea, the... wouldn't it? I mean, that would, that it, would make it much easier, actually, wouldn't it? It would. It's a debate It happens have. in lots of other countries, doesn't yeah. it? Other countries do charge people. They do, because they've got the charging right. structure. They don't have a health system free at the point of need. And so this is small amounts of money compared to the whole NHS. So if we want to put the upfront infrastructure in and spend hundreds of millions setting the structure up, we could do it. It would be a long time to get the return on investment. It does take ID cards. It does take an infrastructure, doesn't it, uh, Myra? It, it, it does. does. It's, 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 it's a huge change, and it, it is really for a relatively small amount. That's why I've seen, Well, it's not a, a small amount. The whole point uh, is that uh, the, what, what Chris was telling us a moment ago, uh, what these management companies were, were saying in their reports, that they accept that only a tiny number of people were identified, um, so that the, the, the problem is much bigger than um, the government thinks. But what I've suggested is that for elective care in hospitals, I, know, I understand it's not all of the patients, and I fully understand that it doesn't involve general practice, but elective care in hospital is one of the biggest costs. And what I've suggested is that patients should present um, a, a, a passport and a utility bill in their name when no, they there, register. There are loads of people who don't have utility bills in their name. I mean, then I, I, every hospital, I live with people who don't have utility bills. <laughs> ever, <laughs> every hospital has got an overseas visitor's officer. And the, the, I'm suggesting there's a screening tool, that's all. And then... Um, well, hang on, no, you have the passport. Does it work? I mean, would you, would, could your receptionist could, could check on somebody's utility bill? Or Do you know how difficult it is to truly identify a legitimate passport? There are a lot of subtle features. I'm certainly not trained to do it. I'm not sure that many no, people are. Agree. And you, you actually need proper equipment to scan a passport to say that it's legitimate. And that's the difficulty we're dealing if, with. So if, passports aren't the answer. If I said to you, Myron, it would take ID cards. You're yeah. not going to make this happen unless you have ID cards which have on them residence entitlement yeah. in the UK. If I said that's the price of it, would you go for residence ID cards? Well, it's, it, it's going to have to happen in have... some form or other. There's going to have to be some personal identification to, to uh, prove that you're uh, entitled to uh, NHS care. That's what happens in any health system that's comparable to ours, anywhere, Sweden, Holland, France, Germany, Australia, wherever you go, they and have we have to have it. Okay. Helen, Myron, thanks, Barry. Thank you.